I don't know why I didn't think of this before, really. Why clone out plug sockets from the wall when I can simply hide them? There you go. Oh, that is not a clean background at all. It's not going to matter. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And this video is all about taking your very first high-key portrait session. Now, high key is a style of photography that's mostly white. Does that mean it has to be a pure white background? No, it doesn't. Does it mean you can't have any shadows? No, you can have shadows. There's no hard and fast rules with high key photography. It's merely a set of guidelines. So I'm gonna do it in a couple of different ways. Now, whilst I'm doing that, you should be clicking on the subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. And I think I'm gonna get a light set. Let's get a model in. Let's straighten up that background a bit and let's get shooting. So to help me out today, I've got the amazing Chloe. Chloe's gonna be the model for this shoot, but the first picture we're gonna take is the most important. I'm gonna make sure I've got control of the room lights by setting my camera to manual mode. I'm at f5.6, 250th of a second, my flash sync speed for this camera, and ISO 200, the native ISO for Olympus cameras. Okay, Chloe, quick shot, no flash firing whatsoever. No flash gives me no picture, and that means all the room lights are not going to affect this picture. The first lighting look I'm gonna do is the classic pure white background. It's perhaps the most straightforward way to do a high key look, and it sounds fairly straightforward, but in reality, there's just a few steps you need to go through first. So I'm just checking that my flash matches my camera settings, which it does. I've got a Flashpoint Evolve 200 in a small soft box. That's gonna be the light for Chloe. Let's take a shot and see how this looks. It's the only light in this shot and Chloe looks fantastic, but that background, no, that is not a high key background. It's gray, you can see the dirt, the creases. We need to do better than this. One thing you might wanna try is putting your subject against the background. It kinda of makes sense. If you light correctly for your subject, then surely the white wall will come out white as well. Well, let's try that. Okay, Chloe, here we go. And once again, I've got great light on Chloe, but that background, it might be brighter, but I can still see the creases and it's not the cleanest of backgrounds. My solution for this is actually to use two lights. So I'm gonna use a second light and its job is just to light this white background. This is the brightest light I'm using of the two. This is a Flashpoint Explore 300 and it needs to be fairly bright because it's gotta light this whole area. However, how bright should I make it? That really is the big question. Let's just put it on full power. That makes sense. Maximum brightness on that white background. Okay, Chloe, here we go. Full power, backlight only. And what I end up with is, yeah, a white background for sure, but I've got a lack of contrast. In fact, she's partly lit by the bounce light. That's way too much light coming out of that flash. The question is, how much light can I actually have coming out of that flash? Well, the answer is the exact same amount of light that I've got coming onto the front of Chloe, f5.6. Now I've got an advantage, I can use a flash meter. If you're using trial and error, you'll take a few shots and try and get it right that way. But if I meter off the back of Chloe's head, I'm getting f13 at the moment, that's full power on that flash. So that needs to come down quite a lot to get to f5.6 f5.6 so that means i've got the right amount of light or the maximum amount of light on chloe from that backlight it's not going to give me a perfect silhouette because we're in a small home studio and light bounces around but here's what it does okay chloe here we go and you can see that that is much darker on Chloe, but you will notice there are still a few creases on the fabric and that's to be expected. I'm not trying to make the entire background go white. All I'm trying to do is make it white around Chloe and the rest will fix in post-processing. To make the edges of the picture white in Photoshop, all I do is make sure my foreground color is white. Then I get a paintbrush and just loosely paint around the edge. I know the complex areas around Chloe are already white because we've done that with light. So I've got my key light back in front of Chloe again. It's metered for f5.6. So effectively, the front and the back of Chloe's head both meet at f5.6. Now that should give me the whitest background I can possibly get away with without losing contrast. Let's see what we get. Okay, Chloe, here we go. 
and that looks really good. Great light on Chloe. It's nice and white around her, but we haven't lost detail in her white clothing, but that white background with a little bit of post-processing will be beautifully clean and white. So that's the basic setup done. So Chloe, if you're ready, ready. let's take a few shots like this. Here we go. Now you've probably noticed that Chloe is wearing white and that's not an accident. That's part of the styling for this high key look. But we can take it a little bit further because I've given Chloe some white fabric and that's not the only white fabric. I've got some other white fabric here as well. Not sure which one's gonna work best. We'll probably try them both. Okay, Chloe, let's take a few shots like this. Here we go. This time we're going to do a slightly different look because rather than trying to remove the background and make it completely white, I want to work with the background, retain some detail in it, but still have it that high key look and feel. So the background this time is these paper lanterns. We've got 20 of them hung up. Yeah, that was good fun to do. And exposure is going to make a big difference on this because I need it to be the correct exposure, but not too bright. So I've got my flash meter. I'm going to meter off of Chloe's chin, making sure I don't stand in the way of the light. Here we go, Chloe. I'm getting a 5.6, so this is the correct exposure on Chloe. Let's just take a test shot and see how it looks on the background. Okay, Chloe, here we go. And it looks bright. There's a lot of whites in here, but there's no pure whites. There is detail even in the brightest highlights. However, the shadows, I'm not so keen on those. For the shadows, I'm going to use the second flash, the Flashpoint Explore 300. Again, it's my brightest of the two flashes, and that's good because it's got a lot of work to do. It's going to bounce off the biggest light modifier I own, which is the ceiling, and that's going to just bounce light around the room and fill in the shadows a little bit. But how much is the question? Well, there's no exact science to this. It really is a matter of taste. I'm going to aim for about two stops under where I'm currently photographing. So that is f2.8. Let's see what we get in whatever position it's currently in. F2.8 is my target. Okay, so there we go. So that is two stops less light, and that's just the fill light. I'll take a picture of just that light so you can see what it's doing on its own. And as you can see, it's nice soft lighting, although there are some shadows on the opposite side to the key light. Effectively, what you're looking at is the shadow values in this shot. So I'm turning the key light back on again, which I can do from the remote here. And let's see what it looks like with all of the lights together. Okay, Chloe, here we go. And that looks amazing. I love the high key feel. The shadows are there, but they're not too dark and deep. Yeah, this is gonna look really good. Okay, so that's the lighting set. Chloe, are you ready? ready. Okay, let's take a few shots like this. Chloe's doing a great job of modeling, but props can add another dimension to a shoot. So I found Chloe some sunglasses that kind of match the paper lanterns.
Well, that was great fun to do, and the end results look pretty good straight out of camera, but of course there's always a bit of post-processing, in this case very little, just a reduction in vibrance to give a washed out feel, and an opening up of the shadows to increase that high key look. When it comes to the look, you might be thinking, where's the histogram? Well, the histogram is a guide, and what you're looking for is a histogram that is largely over towards the right-hand side. There doesn't have to be an actual spike in the white part of the histogram, unless you're doing that pure white background, in which case there is. Remember, high key, just like low key, isn't a set of rules, it's more of a set of guidelines, so if you feel it's high key, it probably is. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, don't forget to leave me a comment down below. Click on the bell icon and you'll never miss a video right here in Adorama TV. And of course, remember to click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.